This is Getting On With Life, Biblical Wisdom for Successful Christian Living. And this lesson is Let Go. Wise King Solomon advises us there is a time for certain things in life, but then a time for the very opposite. In Ecclesiastes 3, 1 and 2, he says, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot. Solomon points out there is a time to hold on to things, maybe storing them and valuing them, and then there is a time to throw those things away. In Ecclesiastes 3.6 he says, A time to get and a time to lose, a time to hold on and a time to cast away. I want to discuss with you those times to let go, and those things you might need to let go of right now. There is a proverbial situation in stories where someone clings to a treasure they won't let go, but that stops them being able to hold the rope or otherwise get rescued. For example, a greedy pirate sinking in the water who won't let go of the treasure chest that makes him sink. In such situations, a person's life may depend on them letting go, but if they do, they will lose out enormously. And that's allegorical of so many situations we might face in life where we have to choose between one thing and another, and there is a cost either way. I heard just a few days ago of a man who fought for his rights in court for 28 years and finally won. However, over those years the man lost his marriage, his friends, and most of the valuable things in life. So that suggests the need to count the cost, weighing up the benefits we seek against the price we might have to pay. In Luke 14, 28, Jesus said, Which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost to calculate if he has enough to finish it? In Luke 14, 31, Jesus said, What king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consult whether he can with 10,000 battle his enemy who has 20,000? I recently met a man who fought for custody of his children for over seven years. It cost him huge sums of money, and he went into court fifty times, being defeated over and over again. However, the price was his relationship with his children, and he would not give that up. Just recently he won the battle, and his children are with him, enjoying what they had wanted for years. So, in counting the cost, we don't automatically back down on something just because it will be costly. That father told me that he would keep on fighting and never give up on his children. So for him, no price was too high to pay to get his children back. Many things we are committed to are not so worthy as that. We are often passionate about our reputation, career, financial success, social status, place in the corporate pecking order, and so on. We can become driven, even obsessively, to achieve certain things that are not worth the price we are paying. I have met many Christians who don't take time to worship God or to serve and glorify Him because they have other things that are far more important to them. Yet those things can be as worthless as simply having a day off on Sunday or pursuing their pleasures. I've met people totally committed to being right, and even when they are wrong, they won't admit it. They can't become humble, so they walk away with a stiff neck. There are many things we can love more than God such as loving ourselves and loving pleasure. 2 Timothy 3, 4 says, Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. These are things we must let go. They are things that cause us to pay a very high price. They will drown us in distraction, self and sin. They will keep us from the fresh air and sunlight of God's presence. Of course, we must also let go of our resentments, hardness of heart, unforgiveness, bitterness, shameful acts, addictions, selfish habits, and much more. These evils pollute us and keep us from God, yet we can be strongly committed to them, even as they drown us. Some people go to their grave bitter and resentful. People die holding on to their sinful habits, refusing to repent. They never let go. Humility, repentance, and the fear of God would have transformed their life, but they would not let go of the offenses, lusts, or pride in their heart. They treasure things that destroy them and refuse to place those things at Jesus' feet and discover true living. 
That helps us understand Jesus' words about losing our life in order to find it. If we hold on to toxic things that will destroy us, we lose our life. But if we give those things up, we are free to discover life in wonderful freedom and blessing. In Mark 8.35, Jesus said, Whoever wills to save his life will lose it. But whoever gives up his life for my sake and the gospel's, the same will save it. A sad thing I see often enough is people offered something that will do them much good, such as salvation through Christ, or some input that will bring more freedom, or the opportunity to expand their experience of God, or ways to serve God and be fruitful, but those offers are turned down for things of no value. People would rather stay in their mess than step into the better things God has for them. They won't let go of their life, their comfort zone, their preconceived ideas, their fears or the like, and walk away from things that are choking their life. Right now you may be killing yourself or locking yourself away from the good God has for you because there are things you won't let go. Maybe there are offences you have experienced that you won't forgive and bitterness you won't repent of. Maybe there are sinful or selfish habits you hold dear, not allowing God to take more of your life. Maybe there are prejudices or self-serving patterns you will not give up. Maybe there are ambitions which you will not let go of. Friends, there is a time to let go. And right now is the time to let go of all those things that hold you back from God's best. Stop valuing things that eat up your life. Stop holding dearly to ambitions or vengeful notions or selfish patterns that rob you of the life God has for you. Bring yourself to God, humbly confessing your weakness, sin and folly, and as you hand your life to God, enjoy the release that comes when you let go. God bless you.